All right, guys. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be a little bit difficult because, you know, my buddy Greg, who normally runs the tech side of things, uh, had to take his girlfriend back to uh, her home in Pensacola area. So I will be bobbing in and out from time to time, um, you know, think nothing of it. But we had so much fun with Esteban last time he was on, and I really didn't feel like we got far enough along. And plus, there's a lot more to some things that uh, – have happened since the last interview that I really wanted to touch on some things that are very personal to me and, and my friends and family. Um, so it, you know, I, I felt it very uh, necessary to bring him back on just not only for that, but because he, he said some things during the last interview that uh, really kind of struck with me. And, and I, things I don't hear too often, but from the, from some of the top artists in the industry. So I really wanted to, you know, continue the conversation a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring him on and we'll discuss uh, what he's been up to. <clears throat> Good on, man. Pop it How's up it going, again. guys? Ah, <laughs> so glad to be back. Yeah. It was a good time last time, so I'm more than, more than happy to be here again. Yeah. So uh, you've been pretty busy. You know, you and I have been in touch. We've been talking quite a bit because of uh, some things. But beyond that, beyond our personal uh, uh, business dealings, I guess, You've been really busy with some other guys like Clay McDonald and and mm -hmm. uh, you know doing work on some covers and stuff on some really popular titles that I don't know if you can actually talk about. Um, I'm pretty sure you can't show it yet. But, yeah, uh, no. uh, yeah. As far as showing, I don't think so, and I I think we yeah. can, but I'd rather stay on the safe side um, uh, and not potentially get someone in trouble. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I mean, what what have you been up to, bud? What I mean. So yeah, I've been. Uh, I had a small, my first kind of small con in a while. Like it's been like three or three months, and I had a, a very small uh, local show this past Saturday. So that was super nice. It was super nice to get back out there and kind of like shake the cobwebs off. Um, it was in uh, Rosemont, Chicago, so it's pretty close to me. So it was just really nice to get out there and see people. And it was pretty busy as far as like. It was only like, I think 50 ish vendors, maybe 60, so somewhere in that window. It wasn't too big by any means, but it was just a good time. So I had that this past weekend, um, sure with sharp comics. So we, we had like a, a, a booth, we had like six tables kind of going by. So they, they were handling some stuff, uh, CGC and, and just s s with slabs and all that. And I was kind of just painting and selling my prints and stuff like that. So it was really great. Uh, but yeah, with, like you mentioned with Clyde McDonald, I've been, kind of hammering out from the last live sale, like was like two months ago, I think somewhere in that window, but we had like 70 or 60 uh, sketch ops that were sold during that event. So I'm slowly kind of chipping away at that. And when, and with doing some like other covers and it's been challenging to kind of split up my time evenly. Um, but yeah, it's like you said, I've been pretty busy and it, I, it's, I absolutely love it, but yeah, absolutely. It's been a good time. Yeah. So when you get when you're at a show and you have you you said you were painting, do you mm -hmm. end up with uh, you know a couple people coming to watch you? I'm sure it's not like a Rob Pryor thing where you have a, an arena filled to to watch you paint. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, it's it's not like like sort of like a like a performance by any means. I've kind of just um, I'm there kind of in my table when it's slow for the most part. But if there are like people looking through my books, I will put my stuff down and kind of like talk and 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 just engage with everyone. That's probably some of my favorite stuff to do to make sure that everyone's taken care of and no one feels ignored. Cause especially for this particular show, it was just me. So usually I have some help if it's a busier like C2E2 or uh, New York Comic Con or something of that nature. I always have definitely more than a couple. So yeah, it's, I just have my little uh, painting station up and I'm doing kind of small remarks when it gets a little slower, or just some downtime. But I, I generally don't like me that's just a personal thing me painting while there's actively people unless they like really want to see it then absolutely uh i'll, I'll sit there and I'll, I'll paint while and ha uh, have them watch me but it's not necessarily like a, a big display or like you said rob Pryor, oh he has like kind of music going on he's got like a big spectacle so it's definitely not so much that but it's still a really good time I think a lot too, like when you are painting, a lot of, uh, you notice a lot of artists, they'll, they'll do the live streams of them painting and stuff like that. And it tends to generate a lot of viewers. And I think mm -hmm. also when, when doing that in person, when you're at a show, uh, sometimes it can, you know, you can get a crowd. And some people like love to come watch that. They love to watch the process. Yeah. And even sometimes pick your brain about the process. Um, you know, whatever it is, why you're shading this way, why you do your, uh, you know, 
whatever it is, your, your line work this way, why you put colors down before you put lines. Some people don't do lines. So, I mean, it, it's just kind of a, I guess, a, a preference. But Yeah, absolutely. And and that's something that I have been toying around with, um, like just thinking about, because it is something that, I mean, people genuinely do love, like the streams a lot. Of, I'm getting some more constant engagement, which is super nice, because I'm, I'm usually by myself in my studio anyway. So it is pretty nice sometimes to like, throw up the webcam and just have people watching and asking questions. I absolutely love it. And, and it gets, gives me the chance to like explain my process and, or like anyone that is just, if I can inspire anyone to, to, to really be like, Oh, okay. It is possible. Like it is a process. It's not necessarily like a God given gift. It, it is a skill. And I think once you kind of like are engaging with, with, with people and they can see what I'm doing and I'm explaining it, I think it kind of gives people, um like a sense of uh, i can do it too so that's definitely a huge like like plus for me i really love doing that and kind of showing that it is possible that anyone can really do it and that, that's something also that i, I kind of want to touch on as far as the god-given gift thing mm -hmm. none of what you do is a god-given gift you've you've worked for it and by evident i don't know if you have it handy laying around but there was a spider-man that you and i had talked about that you recalled drawing when you were like like five six seven somewhere in there you were young. oh the 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 small uh i don't i actually i gave it back to because i was digging through my mom's stuff i was at her house a couple like a month ago and i i found it uh but i left it there because i just didn't because i felt like it was gonna get lost or whatever <laughs> but yeah and i know what you're talking about like that original spider-man i drew as a kid um i'm trying to think if i i know i took some but i have it I, on uh on on That's, our uh, our chat, and I can yeah, find it. Yeah, really so pull it up in Messenger. I was unfortunately I didn't date it um, when I did it when I was a kid, but I think she said she, I was younger than eight, somewhere in that window. Uh, Justin, Robert O'Brien, thank you guys so much. Um, love um, you guys are fantastic, and thank you for all the support. But um, but yeah, no, uh, it, it is a, a skill, and I certainly the only thing that I would say that. Is very hard to teach is so much the imagination part but even that can get uh like that can okay. be alert oh so siri shut up <laughs> <laughs> siri's going off right now i don't know i didn't say siri um what was i saying uh oh yeah so like the the creative imagination is probably the one thing that it's like it's really hard to teach but other than that everything else is teachable 100 percent. and i think uh, like one of my favorite artists that especially in college feng Zhu, he's a, a, a incredible concept designer he was always going on about your uh library like stocking photos like thousands and thousands of photos in your in your computer and having like a visual library to build off because you can almost call back to it your, your mind will when you have an idea like when you see constant images over and over of different either machines or if you're like specializing in landscape drawings if you have like a library that you've like like acquired over the years you, you your visual library is what he calls it builds up and then you can kind of slowly piece together in your mind and be like oh let, let, let me pull that back up and you have you can have 10 different reference images up and that's how i've kind of learned to um to kind of build my drawing skills okay so there it is yeah that's it <laughs> So that took me oh, a little bit. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys, this is kind of wonky, and it doesn't make for a great interview and everything. But this is the the image that he was taught that we were talking about. Yeah. This is a very young Esteban Salinas. Um, yeah. Versus, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen some of the stuff he has. If you have something, uh, you know. I just uh, did a Venom. Um, that's actually pretty close to that. It's not Spider Man, but it is Venom. Um, so this is something like yeah. recent. Like I did now. it last night just for sketches. <laughs> so I mean like that. It's, it's funny. Yeah, I could say it's same pose, same everything, but it's, it's, but like I said, like you see the, the, um, anatomy is a lot better. And let me just frame that. So this is just like a fun little like bedtime sketch. I did it before bed. Uh, but yeah, so they could see the pose. I don't know. I've always been a fan of that, like straight on pose, but yeah, just right. years of, uh, practice and trial and error and learning what works, what doesn't, yeah. but, so yeah, it, it's not, it, as you said, it's not a God-given talent. It is practice, paying attention to, as you said before, the fundamentals, the, you know, yep. just honing your craft. Mm -hmm. uh, so with that, I kind of want to switch gears a little bit and, and yeah. kind of talk about 
uh, when you initially came on, there was something, a, a reason that I, I uh, you and I, our paths crossed again. So mm -hmm. uh, recently, uh, the girl I'm dating, uh, her brother was in uh, uh, a wreck. And if you guys remember on my personal page, I had made a post uh, about, um, you know, a family wanting, uh, wanting something. And I, and I needed so, somewhat of a uh, photorealist artist. Now we went through a bunch of them. And one of the reasons that I, I, I went with you is a, we we've, you know, talked before we have had, uh, you know, interactions. You were on the October mm -hmm. edition of Comic-Con online. Mm -hmm. um, we, we've done some things together. Um, and also your, uh, well, your references for one, your, your, uh, your portfolio, if you will, that, that you shared is one of the things that really stuck out. Um, so, I guess before I get too far into it, I want to bring on uh, Brayton, who is the person that this commission was done for. Um, so we're going to pop him up. Um, there we go. Brayton, welcome to the show. Uh, so here's the story. I, I kind of want to, uh, would you rather tell it, Brayton, you want me to, or, or how do you want to? Thanks for having me, Corey and Esbon. Thank you so much. I cannot... I cannot thank you enough. Just your work, your art, and whenever you just showed that Spider-Man picture, you're like, oh, I did one last night similar to it, similar pose. And <laughs> just the detail, you know, it's it's awesome. You definitely have a craft. And, um, thank and you, there's man. a lot of people out there that you can touch their lives, you know, just with, with what you're doing. Um, I really appreciate and, that, man. And, Corey, what, um, what you want me to, to tell you um, what exactly again? <laughs> I guess sort of a, a little bit of, you know, you were uh, – well, your, your life pretty much changed forever about a month ago, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and that's in the process, you know, uh, I guess if, if you want to talk a little bit about that, you can, yeah, if you don't yeah. have so, to. The, um, I was in an accident and um, my vehicle rolled. Um, I had a truck and it rolled a few times and my arm, unfortunately, was out the window. Um, mm -hmm. So the vehicle rolled on my arm. Um, and then from there. I was sent to the hospital and they found out basically a day and a half later after I was already there that, that, um, that my main artery was severed, um, during the accident. Um, they said that I should have died within three minutes, um, after the accident because of how much blood I lost and my main artery was severed. They told, they told oh. me that, um, that people die within three minutes of that artery being severed, but somehow, some way, um, I was not alone in that moment in time, and my main artery clotted. Um, so it uh, definitely wasn't my time to go. And as long as you hold, have something to hold on to in life, I don't think that uh, it's going to take you away if you're willing to put up a fight. Yeah. So on that, while Braden was in the hospital, you know, it, it was very. What do you mean? He didn't see it on his phone. Well, he showed it. Yeah, my. I, yeah. yeah <laughs> as you can see, the results. Yeah. Of, yeah, yeah, a lot of there, but. So, while you were going through this, you know, we, you're in, you, you have a very large family, Braden. Very, very large family. As I was joking before we went on the air, I'm pretty sure you guys six, six, uh, succeed and start your own country. You're, you're, you're such a large family. Um, it, it's. Everybody gathered. I mean, we were, were myself included, were, were outside of the hospital in this little area. You know, they wouldn't let anybody in. We had to at one point have 20 plus people just, just parked out at this little uh, 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 it's like picnic area. We were all sitting there. Everybody, you know, got to go up one at a time, unfortunately, because of the, the current uh, uh, climate. Yeah. Um, you know, <sighs> Braden's dad, Ray, um, you know, knowing what I do, you know, come up and he, he wanted to start discussing something uh, for Braden, uh, you know, which which up until about a week ago, Braden still had no idea about. Um, we he told me what he wanted. He told me, you know, we, we knew at that point that Braden was going to lose his arm. Um, and he come and he asked me to find an artist that could depict his son 
in a very powerful way, in a very almost heroic uh, way. But he wanted to make sure that his son still had his arm. And one of the most important things to it is on the arm that, that he lost was a matching tattoo that him and his father got together of a phoenix. Mm -hmm. And that was a very important piece that needed to be in the image. Um, so, you know, I, I went and I went searching and I made the post and I went through, you know, a lot of, I guess, applicants, um, you know, because they were pretty much willing to pay anything to, to, to get this uh, because it would, you know, it, you know how it goes it, when these pieces mean a lot to people. Yeah. It, money really doesn't matter as long as you get what what you're looking for. Right. Yeah. Um, and eventually, we ended up going with you, um, and it was a very. We went through a couple pieces of you know concepts of what we wanted, and it, we ended up settling a little bit on on uh, a cover that actually meant a lot to me it's something that then i explained it to Braden later on uh it was a uh a an homage a bit to an ariel olivetti piece and the reason being is what that piece meant um and i'll let you guys look it up later it's cable volume two number i think it's eight eighteen yeah eighteen so you guys can look that up later but right now what i want to do is i want to bring the piece up on screen and I want to kind of give Esteban a, a moment to talk about the process and let him and Braden kind of discuss a little bit about it. Um, let me uh, bring this up. All right, come on now. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just couldn't imagine the, the wh where to begin with a piece like this, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, how, yeah, no, how it was. Start? um it was pretty challenging. It was a little bit out of my comfort zone, but it's something that like I, I think I definitely have a strength with when it comes to uh, like like Corey said, like it's it's a very um, heavy piece and it's something that has a lot of meaning and a lot of backstory behind it. And I think I would really intrigued me, at least from the original post. I still um, like right now, this is the first time I've ever heard uh, any details of, of what what the accident was um and my condolences man that's that's uh that's a hard thing to go through and like once i mean this is like i said my first time actually hearing the details but i knew there was something that was he Corey kind of explained it but um didn't go in much detail and that was enough like even just like the cliff notes version was was very heavy and i really wanted to do it and so finding um i was digging through some reference images i found some images of you and your daughter and um like i said he, he uh cory made it that they really wanted your tattoo and I can understand why. I mean, that's such a, such a, a strong connection and to lose that it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's heavy. And I really wanted to make sure every piece was the best that I could do it. And like he was saying, I think my strength is a lot of everyone uh, um, at cons when I get tons of people coming through and like looking at my stuff, all the, I get a lot of people saying that I capture tone and, 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 uh, 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 the emotion very well. And I think that has a lot to do with just kind of the music choice that I have. So I get very almost, what do they call it? Not method. I don't want immersed. to say that. that's not, yeah, I get very immersed and I have like, I was listening to, uh, for this particular piece, like I was listening to, um, the Lion King, uh, especially the, 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 when Simba loses his father. So like a lot of that, like a lot of that heavy wow. kind of orchestral, like wow. and i've listened to uh han zimmer talk about it when he was writing that piece like he lost his father at a young age and like you can tell he was saying he went to a lot of dark places and i can i really wanted to tap into that into that necessarily that very emotional heavy kind of mindset and i was like Corey had pointed out after the fact when i had kind of not finished but i was pretty close to it he's like it looks a lot like ash like the background and like and so we kind of went with that and a lot of little things that kind of just happen uh and i didn't necessarily plan it but it, it it's just one of those things that like i said like the they would think it was your idea Corey. to we we're talking about like the phoenix he wanted to look like it was rising out of him and i thought that was an awesome idea so kind of like this almost you can see the brush strokes and the whole piece kind of like coming out and upwards and spiraling and i really wanted to play into that like a it was it was a very uh it was a fun very creative process and it's definitely out of my comfort zone uh but i i had 
an amazing time with it. Like I said, I want to thank you, Corey, for letting me, for choosing me to, to, to do this for, for, for you guys. And I'm forever grateful. And like, fun. especially when, when it has that so much, so much, uh, weight to it it's really special and I'm, I'm grateful and Esteban, i just want to say like you, your heart shows through your work um of just how much you put into it um like you said you can capture emotion and you, you you're in the right place mentally like the set and setting the music like you're fully immersed and that's um really re like i i respect you for that you know only if more people you. really did what they loved you know and just followed that inner self you know it's, it's yeah, like Corey, yeah. You know, Corey does what he loves and it's just you know he like great people like yourselves are inevitable whenever you're being your true self yeah so Thanks, I, I want to really kind of lighten things up just to fuzz right quick mm -hmm. I'll talk about how, how difficult it was to get a solid image of Brayton yeah, um, very hard without, without letting him know that, that what we were doing I mean it was really yeah. hard. we had a bunch of images from when you were younger no long hair really thin beard everything um, had sunglasses everything had hats it was like oh i can't get a clear <laughs> image of him like it was like it's same thing with your daughter it was like man like i'm working with like the scraps here it was really hard to like the that aspect you it, like you said not only did you catch the emotion but you caught the moment and just um just that moment in time it's captured and with like the like i'm looking to like the, you can see like light like coming down from that side you know, um, just the, the lighting, the everything about it, um, the, the, like you said, the Phoenix rising and the um, the cross there. That's something that um, whenever I was 18 years old, um, I actually had a dream and there was a huge cross on my back. And that's mm -hmm. where that cross fits in, because not, not only is it basically just every step in life you take is just fate. That's mm -hmm. what it comes down to, that everything has purpose. Um, and that's uh, just how you captured it there, just the boldness of the cross and just the the, the colors and the contrast. It's um, I've never seen anything like it, and you're uh, very talented. Uh, uh, like like I said, I, all I well, all I was concentrating on to to make sure that you guys were happy with it. And once I heard, like I was holding my breath. I asked Corey, I was like, dude, dude, like I was almost like. Uh, not panic i wouldn't say panic but like just kind of holding my breath like all right like i need to know like do they like it or what did, did i do my job or did, did, I, did i live up to the to the thing because yeah i just it was something with that much there's just like meaning behind it i really wanted to make sure that i did it right and um as as any artist will tell you drawing kids and old people are the hardest and like your daughter especially because i only had like two images to work with it was very difficult to make sure i i, I wanted the likeness there and i wanted and especially when you're changing uh because obviously it's complete it's not a, a direct reference painting but like the uh what i was talking to corey about when, when i was making it it kind of hit me midway is i wanted like I, I i asked them I was like what do you think about lights in it like i know necessarily the references that we were going for didn't have any like i thought that was something that i could play on and i i completely <clears throat> did it by accident but the, the big meat light on the shoulder and her hugging it it's almost like that's the brightest spot of the piece and i really wanted to emphasize like the warm tones and yep. her hugging you and, and like that, that. You have it, like right beside her face and it's just yeah um, it's so awesome Awesome. I said that was what was most important to me to make sure that I, I I did it right and to make you love it and your family be proud of it. And I'm it glad to hear that little, you guys. If it wasn't for that little girl right there, I wouldn't be here today. I'll tell you that. I can imagine, and yeah, <laughs> so, so I can 100% believe that. And I really wanted to play up and kind of like you said. It, I really wanted to emphasize that her not seeing anything different. And she just loves you. I mean, as 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 her her father and, and her her dad, I really wanted to 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 sell the idea or like get the complete uh, idea of her just embracing you no matter what. And she she didn't see anything different at all. And like it almost like her completely uh, uh, hugging your arm and just not paying any attention to it, just like it was there. To begin with, I know that you went above and beyond my family's expectations. Okay, that makes me feel really good about that, man. Thank you. Like I said, Corey, thank thank you again for for choosing me and or just letting me be a part of this. It's like these are the kinds and, of projects that I definitely live for, for sure. And Esteban, I just want you to know that it's such a um, powerful piece that days that I'm having a hard time, 
if I just look at this photo, it actually gives me strength. And I want you to know that that it's 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 something for me to to remember. You know, it's something that I don't want to forget. It's something that 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 you know. It it, it honestly um, it changes the way my perspective on everything, and life is always changing. But um, it's 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 a it's a gem, and um and it it just it came from your heart, and it means more to me. Thank you, man. It makes it all worth it, all the struggle worth it. And I can't imagine, like I said, if it can brighten your day up, and that's definitely what what I found to be the most rewarding part of. of and it's not even something you think about getting or being just drawing stuff. It, you just, I just do it because I enjoy it. But just having people like I've had my work touch people, and they when they tell that man, that's like a, a whole other level to it. That really kind of yeah, even really. Even the phoenix looking forward i think that's powerful too the way that you just i don't know if this is like a like a freak of nature kind of thing of how just perfectly everything fell together in place but even the things that like the phoenix looking forward you know is um, yeah. and with the white eyes it's just i you're you're very, very gifted man <laughs> thank you man i, I really appreciate you, that you're gonna go it. far you're gonna you're gonna do a lot and you're gonna um and i know that but you're this is the i just uh, i can't wait to see what you're up to in a few years <laughs> thank you man it's been it's been a ride and i'm looking forward to it but i just gotta take a day at a time and even if i don't go anywhere just doing this stuff it's you, it's awesome it's, inevitable. it's gonna catch up with you and um you and anything that i can do um I'm, I'm, I support you 110%. Thank you, Brandon. I really appreciate that. And like I said, Corey, thank you, everyone. Um, see Jay Ferguson, thank you so much. You guys were, were uh, you guys are awesome. I'm grateful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, again, yeah. Also thank to Ray, to Ryan, uh, his dad, his brother, it was kind of their moving, uh, their mom, uh, who, uh, you know, was kind of a, a, a driving force in the image as we see it now. She was, you know, I ran a couple of ideas by her, uh, and, and I kind of Ray had one image, and then uh, you know their their mom made uh, an executive decision on I want this. Um, so uh, you know, I, it was Mother's Day, so I, I went with it, and uh, you know, who says no to a mom on Mother's Day? Not yeah. This guy. Um, <laughs> So a, a mother of that, nine, that too. yeah. Um, and, and I think you know, it, it, and I did kind of push for this. And the reason being, I, I, I push for this sort of thing is, you know, I, I do work in the industry, and I, and I read a lot into the the images and whatnot. And what I saw in in the original image and what it meant to me from the Ariel Olivetti version is, you know, like like with this here, I'll tell you exactly what it is. You know, Braden has kind of experienced a catastrophic event. Um, you know, to the point where he needs something to lift him up. The Phoenix is kind of pulling him up out of those ashes. And he still has a very large uh, load to shoulder. That's what the cross was meant for. And no matter what's going on around him, his daughter's still going to be latched onto him, looking to him for guidance and to feel, you know, like a kid. And he's got to, he has to, you know, keep a smile on it and stay positive and keep looking forward. And keep looking up, not hanging his head. And that—that's exactly what what this is. That—that's that, you know what I envisioned it. it this is every bit of it. That's and awesome. dude, it was a per perfect reference, uh, perfect cover choice. I personally have not. I I had never seen the um, original cover before. So like supplying that and really kind of seeing the the basis and, and the foundation to build upon was was, yeah. was the right choice. Yeah, it was awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Corey, for all your you know thought and and, and feeling really put into it as well. Because like like you said, choosing that cover was as powerful cover. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, uh, I, I think uh, I think that about covers it, guys. We were about at our thirty minute cap, and man, I I, I do so much want to want to thank you guys again. Thank thank you to Esteban uh, for for doing the piece, Braden for yeah. you know being the, the inspiration for for this. You know, it, this. You don't get to work on things like this often, and you don't get to talk about things like this too often. No, very rarely yeah, when you do a, a piece like this does an artist get to come on and share their process, share their thoughts, uh, because you know a lot of times it is a private thing between the owner of the piece and you know the piece. Yeah. So you don't get a lot of share. 
and, and I'm very grateful that we got to do this on the show. So, um, yeah, <laughs> it, it is, it's a great piece. I can't wait to get it uh, on something and, and, you know, for you, which by the way, I do have the link that we will, uh, we'll get to you after the show. Um, and I'll, I'll send it over to your email, which, uh, I just found out you have an AOL email. I didn't even know. This yeah. <laughs> I don't know. They were so fun. I just remember the discs back in, uh, you go grocery shopping, they'd be giving out the AOL discs. <laughs> yeah. You catch them in the, in the mail all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I remember those. Yeah. Man, I didn't even know they were still up. A, I'll have to download it onto a floppy disk. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you guys again. It was a pleasure to come on. It was a pleasure to to, to work on this for you guys. And thank you again. That's the right, We'll keep in touch. Yes, right. definitely. Awesome. All right, guys. Uh, we'll uh, we'll see you here next time. Thanks everybody for joining. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.